Australia, even in Africa, because y'all still control our economies. We deal with racism. You have never taken a break from being racist for 500 years. You have never taken a break from being racist for 500 years. You have never taken a break from being a racist for 500 years. As soon as slavery was over, colonization started. So when colonization ended, neo-colonization, you gave us AIDS, you gave us COVID, you miseducated our kids, you did experiments on our prisoners, you sterilized our women without their knowledge, like Queen Mother Ancestor Freedom Fighter Fannie Lou Hamer, you created the ghetto, you systemically impoverished us every single day for five years. Hundred years you have committed racism against African people and after 500 years of global Caucasian supremacy after 500 years of global Neanderthal supremacy after 500 years of pale face supremacy you want me to believe you are guilty for what you have done although you continue to do it help me understand overstand and understand this can somebody please help me understand, overstand, and understand how you've been doing this for 500 years, nonstop, all over the world. You have never taken a break. You continue to oppress to this very day. You continue to exploit. You continue to exterminate to this very day. Look what you're doing in the Congo. Look what you're doing in Haiti. Look what you're doing on the streets of Blackham. You have never stopped. And you want me to believe that after 500 years of continuous barbarism, because that's what it is. White supremacy is barbarism. After 500 years of barbarism, you want me to believe you are guilty? You won't apologize for it. You won't issue any type of restitution or reparation. You won't apologize for it. You won't issue any type of restitution or reparation. You won't apologize for it. So you're not sorry. You won't issue no type of restitution or reparation, but yet you say you are guilty. Let me say this to you, Caucasian nation. Let me say this to you, Caucasian nation. It's not guilt. It's fear. There's no such thing as white guilt, but there is white fear. And do you know why you're fearful? You're fearful because you're the world's minority. You're the smallest race. You always have been, but your proportionality of the human population, if we dare call you human, is getting smaller and smaller. And you know that if black people, if Africans ever get control, of society, if we ever get control of the land, if we ever get control of the resources, you fear that we may pay you back for what you done to us. And if we did to you what you have done to us, you wouldn't survive 500 years. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. If melanin dominant people Due to melanin deficient people, what melanin deficient people have done to us these past 500 years. I said of melanin dominant people, do unto melanin deficient people what you have done to us for the past. Let me say it again. If melanin, magnificently melanin dominant people. If the magnificently melanin dominant people of the earth do to the melanin deficient people of the earth what you have done to us you would not survive it you would not survive it one more contradiction for Caucasian nation just one more contradiction if you love black people so much that you want to marry our women, y'all going crazy over our women. 
in black women's self-esteem is so low, even the ugliest white man is more desirable to her than the most handsomest black man. The self-esteem of some black women is so low that even the ugliest white man is more desirable than the most attractive black man. I said some of our sisters are so thirsty for Caucasian validation that the ugliest white man is more desirable to her than the most handsome black man. But here's my question for Caucasian nation. Here's my question. She just can't wait to ride the slave master Shango stick. Shame on you sisters who bunny hop. Shame on you sisters who bunny hop. But here's my question to Caucasian nation. Here's my question to Caucasian nation. If y'all love us so much, black, black, white men love black women. White women love black men. Romantically. If white men love black women as much as y'all claim y'all do. If white women, if white men love black women as much as y'all claim y'all do. I'm talking to all the white men with black wives out there. I'm talking to all the white men with black wives. I want to ask you a question. I'm not going to disrespect you or your family. I'm not going to disrespect you, but I have a question for all the white men with black wives and all the white men dating and sexing and procreating with my sisters, I got a question for you. Snow Puppy Nation, I have a direct question for Snow Puppy Nation. Snow King Empire, Snow Kings. I'm talking to the Snow Kings. Snow King Mafia. Snow Puppy. If you love black women that much, if white men love black women that much, why aren't you out there fighting for justice for Sonia Massey? You love black women so much. Where are the white men fighting for Sonia Massey? You love to sex our women. You love to date our women. You love to impregnate our women. You love, why are you not fighting against the police? who murdered Sonia Massey since you love black women so much. Talk to me, Caucasian nation. You love black women, but it seems like your love is confined to the bedroom. It seems like the white man's love for the black woman is confined to the bedroom. Because if your love for black women isn't confined to the bedroom, why aren't you fighting for Sonia Massey? Why didn't you fight for Sonia Bland? Why aren't you fighting against sexual trafficking of black girls? Why are you fighting against the sexual trafficking of black women? Why are you fighting against the domestic abuse? If white men love black women so much. Why do we only see it in the bedroom? If white women love black men so much. Why are they not fighting to change the criminal justice law? Look at all the white female attorneys we have. Look at all the white female attorneys. Y'all love black men so much, but none of you, none of you are fighting to change the criminal justice code. None of you are fighting against the school to prison pipeline. Y'all don't like us. Y'all just like to sexually make love to our minds. Y'all just like to make love to our mind. It's called confusing the victim. And it's one of the oldest tactics of white supremacy. That's all they doing. All you bunny hopping black people out there. All you, I'm talking globally now. I'm a pan-Africanist. I am the prince of pan-Africa. I'm talking bunny hoppers in London, bunny hoppers in Paris, bunny hoppers in Africa, bunny hoppers in South Africa, Bunny hoppers in Texas, New York, bunny hoppers in Philly, Baltimore, D.C., bunny hoppers in Georgia, Carolina, and Te- all you bunny hoppers should be ashamed of yourself. You making love to them physically. 
You sexing them physically, they sexing you mentally. They sexing you mentally. They ain't doing nothing but confusing your damn mind. And when the time comes for them to remind you of who they really are, when the time comes for them to remind you of who you really are, I would hate to be a fly on that wall. Let me go to another contradiction. This is the first day of Black August. This is the first day of Black August, and I'm the king of Black August. I'm the king of Black August, but this is the first day of Black August. Black people who don't like mixed race Africans, and for the record, I have no problem with a mixed race African. As long as they psychologically black, they full time African, they unapologetic. I have no problem with none of my mixed race brothers and sisters. I want to be clear. I'm talking to the non mixed race Africans. Can I ask y'all a question? How can you have such a big problem with mixed race Africans, but you have no problem with interracial marriage? Help me understand. People can love who they want to love. You say. People can date who they want to date. You say. People can marry who they want to marry. You say. So if you don't have a problem with a black man marrying a white woman, if you don't have a problem with a white man marrying a black woman, why do you have a problem with the child they created? Why do you alienate the child they created? Why do you marginalize the child they created? And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? You silly, goofy, anti-mixed race Africans. Let me say this. There's sooner, sooner or later, because of the snow bunny crisis, sooner or later, because of the snow bunny crisis, sooner or later, and I believe it's going to be sooner, there will be more mixed race Africans in America than regular Africans. I'm going to say it again. There will be more mixed race American Africans than traditional American Africans if the bunny hopping continues and is getting crazy. So we are going to become a super minority. I'm going to say it again. I hope y'all listening to me. I hope y'all listening to me. The traditional American African, that means me, a black man with two obviously African parents, right? That's the traditional American African, a black man in America, a black woman in America with two obviously African parents. That is a traditional American African. We will be the minority. We will soon be outnumbered by the mixed race Africans because y'all believe in colorblind love. Because you believe in colorblind love, the mixed race American African will soon outnumber the traditional American African. And once the mixed race American African outnumbers the traditional American African, the U.S. government will no longer consider the traditional American African. They will only consider the mixed race American African. In other words... We will have a colored population in America just like they have in South Africa. Where my South Africans at? Where my South Africans at? In South Africa, we got a whole community of mixed race Africans who don't consider themselves black, although biologically they are. A whole community of anti-black mixed race Africans in South Africa who don't consider themselves black even though biologically they are. We are creating the same thing in black America right now. We are literally engineering ourselves out of existence in America by practicing two concepts. I hope you bunny hoppers are listening. I hope you bunny hoppers are listening. I hope you bunny hoppers, male and female, are listening. The mixed race American African population is growing exponentially. Exponentially. 
Look at all the NBA draft. All of them are mixed race children. A third of the NFL mixed race children. Look at these public schools. So the mixed race American African population is growing exponentially because we believe in colorblind love, right? Colorblind love, colorblind family. So we are engineering ourselves into extinction. The traditional American African will be extinct soon because the mixed race American African is reproducing exponentially, which means our numbers are getting smaller. Think about it. Black men are marrying non-black women. Black women are marrying non-black men. So the predominant African-American will, will soon be a mixed race African-American, which means the traditional American African who has an obviously African mother and an obviously African father like myself, a traditional American African, we will be a super minority. Our number will be so small that nobody will even mention we exist anymore. Our number will be so small that nobody will even mention that we exist anymore. You got 50 million American Africans. 50 million. 5 million are our African immigrant brothers and sisters. Peace and love to them. 5 million are our African immigrant brothers and sisters. Caribbean African immigrant, Central South American African immigrant. Those are the African immigrant. Only about 5 million. You left with 45 million American Africans. It is now 2024. By 2044, I'm going to give you 20 years. It might not take that long. It might not take that long. By 2044, I promise you, I promise you by 2044, there will be more people claiming mixed race on the U.S. Census. There will be more people claiming biracial on the U.S. Census. There will be more people claiming multiracial on the U.S. Census than claiming African-American. I promise you this. I promise you this. In the minute, the minute, the minute that America has more people claiming to be mixed race, biracial, and multiracial than black, the minute they outnumber us and they will soon do it because of the snow bunny crisis, you think black people catch hell now? You ain't seen the hell we gonna catch when we are not even the predominant African-American anymore. When the light-skinned, mixed-race African-American takes over our community. When the light-skinned, mixed-race African-American takes over our community. And for the record, my mixed-race Africans, I'm not demonizing you. If you're loyal to the race, I'm not demonizing you, mixed-race Africans. As long as you're psychologically African and you're a full-time African, what I'm saying, and I'm sure you know this to be true, mixed race Africans, what I'm saying is many mixed race Africans, and you know this yourself, many of them desire white proximity because they were raised by a white parent. And they were raised by a house Negro parent. Every mixed race African had a house Negro parent and a white parent. Every mixed race African in the world has a house Negro parent and a Caucasian parent. They either got a rice mommy, a sand mommy, a salsa mommy, a snow mommy, or a snow poppy, a rice poppy, a salsa poppy. Every mixed race African in the world has a non-African parent and a house Negro African parent. If you are a mixed race, your black parent was a house Negro. I'm just, I'm no disrespect. We just calling it what it is. If you are a mixed race, you had a bunny hopping parent. If your bunny hopping parent was proud to be black. If your bunny hopping parent was proud to be black, you would have a different. I'm not going to say you wouldn't be here because you could have still came through the ancestral portal. I'm not going to say you wouldn't be here because you would have still came through the ancestral portal, but you would have two black parents. You would have two black. If you don't have two black parents, one of your parents is a house Negro. And if they are a house Negro, they don't value black consciousness. 
They don't value black culture. They don't value the black family. They don't value black business. They don't value black excellence. They don't. So you was raised by a non-black parent who don't like black people. And you was raised by a black parent who don't like black people. So many mixed race Africans are predisposed to identify and be loyal to the white power structure. Okay, now let me say this. I am not prejudiced towards mixed race Africans. If you step to me and say, Dr. Umar, I got a white mom, white dad, Chinese dad, Chinese mom, Latino mom, Latino dad, Arab dad, Arab mom, but I'm black. I identify as black. That's who I am. I'm going to accept you at your word until you show me otherwise. In other words, I treat you no differently, mixed race Africans. I treat you no differently than I treat a full-blooded African. I will take you at your word that you are loyal to the race until you show me otherwise. But what I am also saying is many mixed race Africans, first of all, if you were not ashamed of being black, you would not even call yourself mixed race. If you were not ashamed of being black, you wouldn't even call yourself biracial. If you weren't ashamed of being black, you would even call yourself multiracial. So what I'm saying to the traditional American Africans what I'm saying to the traditional American Africans with two parents who are obviously black, because you believe in colorblind romance, you are a part of the problem. We are literally, we are literally breeding ourselves out of existence with this interracial dating and marriage. We are literally breeding ourselves out of existence. That's what we're doing. So this is what we're going to have to do. This is what I'm going to have to do. When I rebirth Team Pan-African. No, no, no. If Drake says he's psychologically black, if Amber Rose says she's psychologically black, if the brother or sister down the street says they're psychologically black, if Kamala Harris says she was psychologically black and she can't say that because she's not, I accept them as family. But that has nothing to do with the fact that the American African is breeding himself and herself out of existence with the bunny hop. The snow bunny crisis is a racial extermination cancer. That's what it is. We are weakening our genes. We are weakening our DNA. Do you think it's a coincidence? Do you think it's a coincidence that the U.S. Census changed in 2010 while Barack Obama was president? Do you think it's a coincidence they gave you a mixed race president and then they changed the racial categories of the U.S. Census? They added multiracial, biracial, identify as more than one race. Why, why they didn't been do that? You've had mixed race Africans since the slave master raped grandma 400 years ago. So why are they just now acknowledging mixed race on the census when Barack Obama becomes the president? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. We've had mixed race Africans since the plantation. So if we have mixed race Africans since the plantation, why do they wait till Barack Obama become president? And now we're going to add multiracial and mixed race and biracial to the census. You know why? They used Obama and Kamala. See how the names sound the same? Obama and Kamala. Kamala, Obama, Obama, Kamala. Look at this mixed race bullshit. Obama, Kamala, Kamala, Obama, Obama, Kamala, Kamala, Obama, Obama, Kamala, Kamala, Obama. Look, they are promoting genocide of the traditional African phenotype. They're using Barack Obama and Kamala Harris to promote genocide through reproduction in our community of the traditional American African phenotype. And then they changed the census so any black person 
who don't want to be black and found out they got a Native American grandma, a Native American grandpa. See, this is why I don't respect the pretendians. This is exactly why I got a problem with the pretendians. The pretendians are just like the misrace Africans who don't identify. The pretendians are another group of mixed race Africans who do what? Disidentify from black people. Disidentify from black people. Listen. And to my pretendians, you ain't special. Self-hate is self-hate. Self-hate is self-hate, whether you call yourself a pretendian or whether you call yourself a mixed race African. Self-hate is self-hate. You don't want to be black. You don't want to be black. So you call yourself mixed race. You call yourself a pretendian. And what you idiots don't realize, what you idiots don't realize, what you idiots don't realize is all you're doing is shrinking the pool of black people that exists in this country on paper. They are reducing the amount of black people that exists on paper. And they're going to make the number smaller and smaller and smaller till they one day going to say, there's no more African-Americans. According to the 2030 census, we only have 100 people still calling themselves African-American. According to the 2040 census, we only have 50 people still calling themselves African-American. According to the 2050 census, we only got five people calling themselves African-American. But we have an influx of pretendians. We have an influx of mixed race and biracial and non-racial and all this other crap. See how this works. Do you see how this works. This is why we must be unapologetically African. This is why we must be unapologetically African. Brothers and sisters, hold fast to the red, black, and green flag. Let me tap in. Miss Panther going on twice. She didn't tap in, or did they stop me from tapping in with y'all? I can't see the comments no more. 